Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Flock Small and our last semifinal Kagi match for this season. Uh, this should be a really exciting one. We've got Holy Stew versus Moose Man, dude. Um, these are both just two fantastic adaptive competitors. They've both been in this uh, league for a while, I believe. Um, both very fun to play. Both very good at what they're doing and always bringing some interesting decks. So this should just be a great, great match. Taking a look at the decks really quick here. Um, it's going to be hard to see. I guess you can kind of see this one a little bit. On uh, Holy Stew's side, we've got Vicky Cyborg, Demonietta de la Moneta. I don't know what that means. Demon out of money or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, mass Mutation deck. We've got Ultra Graviton with things like Discombobulator. Um and the Book of Malefaction, so lots of steel hate going on there. Oh, it looks like they are ready to go, so we're going to run through this really quick. Um, Sanctum is going to be a big board. Lots of controly stuff with things like Barrister Joya. Opal Knight's doing some creature control. Shadows has some stealing. It's not a ton, but the double Rad Penny with lots of damage pips is going to do some board control. We've also got the Bone Nithing there. Master Plan, always fun for some really sneaky plays and stuff. And then on Moose Man Dude's side, we've got Q Adalbert, Zealot of the Languid Plateaus. Uh, this is an AOA deck. I had the misfortune of playing against this one in our pod phase, um, and I did lose to it. Very, very fast, tons of creature control, uh, triple standardized testing, unlock gateway. The Shadow of Dis is a very, very strong card, um, like especially against a deck like this that's going to have lots of those play effects or uh, sitting effects like Cronus or Ultra Gravitron or whatever, where you just need to turn it off for a turn to really shut down some of the things they're doing. Uh, double Miasma, Nerve Blast, Sack of Coins, um, plenty of stealing and stuff going on here, as well as the Merkins. Uh, which can really disrupt some of what the Ultra Gravitron or Cronus is doing here. High level, um, Adalbert to me feels a little bit favored just because it's going to be really fast and it's going to be able to deal with the board, whereas Vicky looks like it kind of needs the board to be able to gain Amber. So we'll see if that plays out. I haven't been doing great on my predictions, but um, I think this deck is... Uh, easy to underestimate i believe but vicky might also be because it's um adaptive and adaptive people are always bringing those tricky decks get us into full screen well i can't type 
Okay, so we've got Moose Man Dude on the top on the AOA deck, and then uh, Holy Stew on the bottom. Looks like things are loading a little bit slow here. Deck lists are not coming up. I might need it. There we go. Uh, Mass Mutation on the bottom. Uh, the one thing the Mass Mutation deck really has going for it is the efficiency uh, with Ultra Gravitron. Three of the drop, four drop pips are all in Logos as well, so that Kronos is going to get a lot of value out of those, even on turn. <laughs> Holy Stew already knows the fate that Ultra Gravitron is going to face. Uh, there's nothing even close to being 10 power, so those standardizers are going to hit it every time, especially there being three of them. Got the lab work to be able to archive it. Uh, yeah. It's probably not going to stay on the board, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe Moose Man Dude will have a fun, fun secondary use for it. Um, Banishing it doesn't really help you a whole lot. Yeah, it'll be hard to see if this MM deck has enough gas just to outrace this because it's going to have to be mostly pips uh, or steal from those rad pennies. <laughs> Bruce Man Dude's reply, Ultra Graviton, anything but standard. Okay, and we've got, uh, let's see, Holy Stew going first. The Mass Mutation deck will be going first each game. Good to remember that as well. Got the Squire Alice coming out early, just getting some small creatures with some armor there. Uh, Sucker Punch coming out and not getting archived, so that'll be gone right away, which is a little bit sad, I think, for this deck. That Sucker Punch can actually do wonders against kind of a lot of small creatures. Uh, right back into Sanctum, though, for Holy Stew, getting plenty of value coming out with the Font of the Eye on the board. Um, Adalbert, though, does have the Poltergeist, so it's not uh, not necessarily going to stay there. We might actually see that coming out here. We've got the Call of the Week hitting um, that Squire Alice. Jeez, oh, they're both playing very fast, so I'm going to try and keep up, but we do have the Unlock Gateway there after the fair game to actually burst a ton. What did we get here? We've got the Shadows hitting rad penny opportunist uh mutant cut person mutant cut person, cut person. so gaining four off of that fair game um, but we do see the ep in hand which is gonna just ruin the day there for um moose man dude taking him back down to four discarding the ultra gravitron uh bot booked in comes out and then we see the standardized testing hitting the bot booked in so both players are playing very fast i'm gonna try and keep up here um but this is this is some gunslinging at the moment. Uh, we have the Rad Penny coming out to stop that key, getting some damage on the Archimedes. And I've also got the Opportunist to kill both Archimedes and that Rad Penny to get that shuffled back in. Uh, more capturing going on here. Again, good chance these are not long for the world, but we'll see. We've already got Gateway and one standardized gone. We don't know what got archived there. Uh, Schuler is gone, so no stealing from this here i think there's only one. Oh, there's two shoelers so we could see another shooler misery exploit for no value that's actually kind of interesting um holy stew's deck has a lot of damage pips and so if moose man dude's not playing a lot of creatures there's a good chance you actually end up with a lot of damage pips on your own or a lot of damage on your own creatures uh if you're holy stew so that misery exploit could be really big uh later in this game or in the next game let's see we've got uh banish put I think one of these cut purses in the archives. We've got the dust imp down. We've got the shadows turn coming back down with the red penny. Just doing a damage on the dust imp. Reaping up to seven. And we've got the master plan down. No idea what gets put under there in this deck. Uh, master plan, one of those interesting cards. But again, there is the poltergeist. So you might just put a throwaway card under there just to try and kind of bait your opponent into hitting it with the poltergeist rather than the font of the eye. But I think. You got to go for the font of the eye here because that's just going to be so much value throughout this game. We've got a Shadow's Turns, the Merkins hitting a Seeker Needle. So that Seeker Needle is actually going to be uh, pretty fantastic for Moose Man, dude. It is going to be well, Shadows anyways, but killing things like this Dust Imp, getting value off of these Rad Pennies anytime they sit on the board. Uh, that's actually a really, really nice hit for Moose Man, dude, there. Um, we did see the Miasma, so no forging for holy stew there either but there's not really scaling control in here so it's really just kind of to stall a little bit we do see the ultra gravitron come down 
uh, Cronus is on the board. We did see the is coming, so that is going to be more archives. So we got six in archives now with Ultra Gravitron also. And then that Discombobulator coming down. So that's one of those cards too. I was kind of going to talk about more. <laughs> We had time to uh, look at the decks, but definitely one. I mean, you got the Yanti Gang down right now. You've still got some nerve nerve blasts left. I don't think we've seen any yet, right? Yeah, both nerve nerve blasts are still in there, but probably could be able to fight into this with like your Merkins and then Seeker Needle it to take care of it. Welcome in, Pinheader Larry. Uh, we are still in game one. Moose Man Dude got a little bit of a lead there with the first key, but Holy Stew on nine Amber now. Probably going to be able to forge this turn we do see the standardized testing taking out the ultra gravitron poke killing now uh, poke just dealing the one damage to the chronos um could have interesting could have shot the rad penny first with the poke to get your extra draw and then standardized kills your dust imp but it also kills your merkins so maybe you don't want to hit the merkins this early but uh, I feel like you maybe could have hit that because then you get the Amber off the Dust Dim too. So maybe a quick little miss there. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking too in Carnage. Could have been sequenced a little bit different layer. But again, both these players are playing very fast. Uh, we've slowed down just a little bit now. But they're kind of in the heat of the moment. And I do think, again, this AOA deck needs to try to win fast against this um, MM deck. Got the Opal Knight coming down for no value. Oh no, it kills the Dust Imp and the Merkins. It just was slow because of the draw resolution. Uh, choosing to archive and archive with the Cronus. Eventual Shadow's turn will be Merkins into Cronus. Shoot, shoot Dust Imp with Seeker Needle. Yeah. But we got a big Sanctum turn coming here, getting some nice value off that Baldric uh, with the fight and the heal on the Yanti Gang. Vaultkeeper deck coming down, so more Steel Hate, uh, which is going to be another, again, a big problem for um, all those Nerve Blasts and stuff, and even this Yanti Gang. Yanti Gang can kill this, but you're kind of just leaving. I mean, you have to be able to kill the Cronus too, is the problem here. Um, and Nerve Blast does not kill that because you have to steal first in order to get the damage from the Nerve Blast. So that, uh, that is a pretty big turn there. And we've also seen two standardizes and the gateway gone. So this AOA deck running a little bit low and the um, stack of coins. So running a little low on your creature control here. Um, standardized hits, Grey Rider, Opal Knight, and Yancy Gang. So even that doesn't help you a ton. So tricky, tricky choices here. This Cronus, unfortunately, just one damage off being able to snipe with the uh, Secret Needle. So even if you can, if you do decide to fight the Ball Keeper, this is still going to stop you from stealing. And then this guy is just going to start getting value with that three armor. This is one of the other cards that I think is a big one in this matchup. Being able to get wards on stuff could be really important. Uh, we do see that last standardized there. Taking some stuff out, and we get a double hit on the Fetch Drones. Oh no, one hit. I always forget. Fetch Drones is two for each Logos card discarded. Uh, so Fila gets discarded, but also the Shadow of Dis. Uh, so again, that Shadow of Dis, a pretty strong thing for shutting down uh, at least like some of these cards from getting too much value. But not going to happen this cycle as it gets discarded to the Fetch Drones. Fila, I don't think you care too much about. Uh, but we haven't even seen that second Shuler, so even that... All this steel hate is definitely really rough for this AOA deck. Um, and Holy Stew doing a good job of putting it on the creatures that are a little bit tougher for the AOA deck to kill. Um, but we did see, we saw a lot of the creature control come out early for the AOA deck. So maybe being a little bit trigger happy on those, but you can't, I mean, you can't leave Ultra Grav on the board because that just starts purging stuff and getting more value. Let's see, we've got a Logos turn with another one of those drop pips coming down on the Infomorph. Um, Cronus just reaping here. So two in archives now, and nothing on the uh, Book of Malefaction yet, but that would have been pretty nice also to just be able to purge this Hexbeon. 
But I think once these wards start coming out from this Amber Heart, things are going to get a lot trickier for Moose Man, dude. And then we get a daughter played. Uh, so what do you got left if you're Moose Man, dude? What other options do we have? I haven't seen Poltergeist yet, right? Yep, so we do see the disc call. Um, Amber Imp is actually not too bad here for just slowing down some stuff, but not getting the steal off that Shuler is pretty rough. Also not getting any kills. Oh, interesting. So Poltergeist did their own fetch drones because they knew there was only one card left in draw. They knew it was a Logos card. So doing that just to get another capture here, just to really try to slow down this deck. But there we see the lights out. Bouncing both of the decks with capture back to hand. Yeah, so I, I mean... I was thinking Adalbert might be able to shoot ahead even without like uh, the chains here. But um, if Vicky is able to win this game, then I think we could be seeing a, a game three for sure. But I mean, there's, it's been very well played getting the discombobulator in the right place, getting um, a lot of that sanctum out at the right times. I think it's still going to be close. We still have, I mean, we just cycled the deck here, so it's not over yet. We've got two Miasmas coming. Uh, still no stealing on this Shuler though. So the, the, yeah, the creature control is just missing a little bit too much here. And there we've got the rad pennies coming down. Yeah, both of them are going to come down. One hits the other and then secret needle hits this one just to get as much value as possible. But you got to think Moose Man Dude probably had those two, uh, nerve blasts in hand for quite a while. Unless they discarded them. I didn't see... I don't think he discarded them a while ago. I think they've just been in hand. So we haven't called Shadows for a bit. There's a Sucker Punch to finally kill the Cronus. So now your Steel is active. Got your Miasma. There's Nerve Blast. There's Nerve Blast. Book of Malefaction is now live to start purging stuff. Jumping up to 8 Amber. And that was... Yeah, four card play. So drawing a bit here too, getting up to eight. Uh, where we're just going to see those rad pennies uh, re recycle themselves here with only one card left in draw. Reckless Rizzo coming down too. You probably just purge the Amber Imp here just to stop them from being able to use it for kind of other stuff. Nope, just going to leave it. Okay. Replay on the shadows. We've got the sucker punch again. Got the fruit of investors. Oh, gets the check, but does not have a way to stop the key again. So I it did still end it as a pretty close game, right? If we got one more miasma draw there, it's a whole different game. Um, although we do have probably two more rad pennies in hand for holy stew. So yeah, the the timing of the steel hate was very, very good for holy stew so we'll see if moose man dude can kind of replicate that okay so mm deck yeah moose man dude's got it mm deck is going first yeah red penny cycle there at the end is also uh awesome and that's where like again hitting the um seeker needle with uh the merkins earlier was pretty big because you saw the deck has two oh wait there it is two seeker needles right so those with the two rad pennies later in the game you can just basically steal two gain four um i guess steal two gain two every turn for a little bit if you want to uh, just to really put the pressure on Okay, so nice logo suite here just to get some archiving going. Uh, we've got an It's Coming right away, though. See if he has the whole thing. Plays a left logica, looking for the second piece. Discards a ton there, uh, including one of the Rad Pennies and a, all of the artifacts you want. Uh, so both Seeker Needles, Book and Amber Heart, all getting milled by that left logica. But we did get the Ultra Gravitron on turn two, along with the daughter, unfortunately. Uh, 
standardized testing still kills the daughter and the ultra gravitron but that is a huge uh start of the game here and you're gonna get to recycle pretty quick because of that ultra gravitron yeah it's it's gonna flip very quick now so not a huge deal let's see what's still in deck I mean, you probably archived a decent amount of Logos. There's tons of Sanctum here, so Logos and Shadows is going to be mostly what you see for the next couple turns, too. No standardized here, so we're going to get to leave this Ultra Grab on the board for a turn, too. Uh, pretty hard not to go back into it and purge one of these Shulers, or even maybe the Archimedes. But you do need to start dealing with this board. Um, that's another thing we didn't look at too much, of how much board control this Mass Mutation deck has, if this gets out of hand. But Ultra Gravitron going to be able to... Looks like he's going to fight and purge here. Which makes sense. Okay, Killer Shuler. Purge. Ooh, purges that Titan. Okay. Just going to slow down some of that archiving. Uh, if you're Holy Stew, it's definitely tempting. <laughs> Holy Stew, unable to find the standardized. Unfortunate. Yeah. This also makes it interesting. If you can kill the Hexpion on your turn, you can basically turn off its destroyed effect by just archiving it with Archimedes effect rather than archiving it and the top card. Um, but yeah, that Titan is going to do a lot of a lot of work here. So I was just thinking the Shulers, you also don't want them to be able to just go right back into disc, fight both of your Shulers off to archive them too. So it's kind of tricky. But we've got Nerve Blast, Bird of Investor, Sack of Coins, Discarding Bad Penny. So going up to five, still no check. We are going to see some shadows here again. One of the Rad Penny's already gone. A couple of your other creatures and both of our Secret Needles. But there's a Bonithing for no value. Gonna get an opportunist though to capture some amber. And that has, yeah, some damage pips too to take out that Archimedes. Holy Stew going back into logo, so probably see uh, a standardized, at least one standardized here. It's not really a reason to play two. Lab work for more archiving, Hexbeon for more archiving. So getting a pretty good chunk of cards in the archives on both sides. We'll see. Just plays one, doesn't discard any others. I think Holy Stew kind of saw late game when all that Sanctum comes out, uh, having a way to kill it with um, those standardized is huge. So need to hold on to those where you can. Got Barrister Joya, Aldrich, and Squire. And then there's the Great Rider for the same, almost the same set of cards that was archived last time uh, from the Ultra Gravitron. But some good value there. Still not going to be checked, though, unless they got another. <laughs> Holy Stew also realizing it was almost the same. And there's the Seraphic Armor, which was under the Master Plan. So getting to check there and rehealing. <laughs> almost the same play, yeah. Like. <laughs> I think that was, yeah, four of the same five cards almost. Squire Alice wasn't there, but. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, we'll see if Holy Stew answers this. Probably see. Ooh, there's another standardized. So I'm just going to take care of most of that Sanctum, but it leaves the Baldric on the board with an elusive. So now, yeah, you can just get a ton of value from this Sanctum. Um, just fighting into the elusive there, but probably don't want to go back into Sanctum here, even though you've got the Pawn through the eye. Ooh, might be a big Cronus turn. we saw the ep is gone so i'm not sure they got another way to stop a key in logos oh what's up fudgenator welcome in we're in game two uh at least you took game one with the mm deck and now we're switched here that one damage pip <laughs> taking out the uh fila but even with the font of the eye capture not going to stop that key uh, did get a couple, let's see, 
just one archive off the Cronus, but we did get that ever uh, popular discombobulator down. Um, and we see a shadows call here, so it's not going to be another standardized, which would have killed the Cronus there, but now this Merkin is smaller. So choosing between the archives or top of deck here. I'm trying to think what archive. That, so we just had an archive turn. Flip the deck. It's got to be a shadows card, right? Oh, it hits the effervescent principle um, for very little value there. I think we were at, yeah, for no change. But so that'll be a nice chain for Holy Stew. Uh, we get double miasma as a whistling dart. So here's where, again, that damage could just sit here for a bit. Uh, you got to watch out for the, um, uh, let's see, misery exploit. And we don't have the other artifact. Um, oh, what is that one called? Amberheart to be able to heal and ward these guys. Get the Rad Penny coming down. Reckless Rizzo with that damage pip to kill the Rad Penny, get it back into the deck. And then a light out on the Yancy Gang and Merkin. So given the Merkin's back, but going to try to force out some more of that creature control. We still have another standardized and gateway that we haven't seen yet so should be some answers here uh the misery exploit plus gateway could be actually really rough here but we do see the shadows turn instead welcome in astron good to see you uh we see a nerve blast for no effect because of the discombobulator merkins hitting the book of malefaction uh which is not huge it's not the worst Oh yeah, I was gonna ask when you were getting here, um, but I heard, remember you saying something about a week, a week ahead of time. <laughs> that was a hit. Uh, I mean, actually, I mean, with the rad pennies, that could be relevant if this game goes long enough. Uh, this could also take out like the uh, Cronus with the discombobulator in it, so probably not too bad of a hit. Uh, what's up, JT? Welcome in. No worries on the lurking. We're yeah, just enjoying this. Who you could be watching football, right? Instead, we're watching some Keyforge goodness. Uh, two really awesome decks, actually. Yeah, there's plenty of good targets. Ultra Gravitron is another good one, but Ultra Gravitron again. You kind of have answers for the creatures for the most part. I'm thinking more of these ones that are harder to get with the standardized testings. <laughs> Bill Seahawks is until four. That's fair. I'm kind of in this state of I'll just watch football games. I don't really have a team. I historically have been a Packers fan. And I still am liking them, but I just like watching a good game. Sunday afternoon, just taking it easy. Okay, back to the game though. So we've got the master plan coming down. Reckless Rizzo getting the steal two, putting two book uh, counters. Or sorry, uh, warrant counters, I believe they are. But Holy Stew says it's time. Uh, gonna do this combo that I think I mentioned before with the Misery Exploit for three. Shadow of Dis, so nothing coming down with value next turn. And then let's see, you probably get the gateway here. Sadly, you're probably not stopping this key. You're just gonna discard something you don't care about. Or something you do. Oh, you're not quite in the, not quite in the states yet, in Maple Country. <laughs> Why is the Ambrim? So maybe it doesn't have the gateway yet. That'd be really sad if it's in your bottom four. Book of Malefaction to purge the Baldric. Interesting choice there. Just doesn't want. I mean, we've seen a lot of logos and shadows turn, so there's a good chance you have a uh, Sanctum turn coming up. Ooh, the poltergeist on the font of the eye to play. Oh, on the font of the eye. Didn't even have a kill though. So just blowing it up to stop uh loose man dude from stopping this key, probably. Banish on the bot booked and still not hitting that. Um, discombobulator. There's our fair game. We see Ultra Grav Daughter bot booked in, so big burst there from the fair game, but big burst for both sides. 
Yeah, three amber on both sides. That is rough. Uh, did he know, though? Oh, no. It was probably like a one in three chance. But he had three Logos cards left in hand, so... It's tricky. Uh, very tricky. But, I mean, you could just go back into a one in four chance to hit on Logos. That's brutal. Yeah, my Asmins could be big, but, I mean, you got... Rizzo now can just steal two. Master Plan can still play whatever's under there. Um, it's the EP. EP has been played. Got a Logos turn, though. So probably going to see the Ultra Gravitron. And you still get the check on the Logos turn. Master Plan plays a Bulwark. Discards the Ultra. Plays the Daughter. Oh, this is probably why. Yeah, just getting a bunch of creatures down. Um, this is actually pretty precarious, though, for Moose Man, dude. This Rizzo and then your two Rad Pennies are some of the only Amber Control you got left. So if you burst enough here, uh, Merkins can fight this. Or Sucker Punch takes it out. Nancy Gang will steal one. Book of Malefaction purges the Reckless Rizzo. Uh, oh, it could be Bone Ithing too. Right, Rad Penny's Bone Ithing can stop this key, but you also need to kill this Yancy Gang, because that's just going to keep getting value. Only on six cards here. Why are we only on six cards? We have the daughter. Oh, because the daughter didn't get its ability because of Shadows of Dis. Yeah, she also got. Well, I mean, it's got to be. I guess just Bone I think stops it, but we got a Sanctum turn instead. I don't think Sanctum stops keys unless you've got. Uh, Squire. There's the Barrister. There's the Squire. Discards the Opal Knight. Yeah, but you can just go... I guess you can't go back into Shadows. The um, Yancey Gang getting purged. But now you're just giving so much time for Holy Stew to find the uh, Miasmas. This is not looking great for Moose Man, dude. Uh, especially not having that Font of the Eye anymore. It's pretty bad. There's a Disturn with a Steel, that Dust Imp, just ready to get some more Amber, but... Oh, there's the Gateway, going up to 11. That will probably do it. Gonna see the Secret Needles, Cut Purse, there's one Rad Penny, Techno Thief. Opportunist? Oh, nothing else. Wow, so the 2-0. Four... Holy stew. Uh, very interesting. Just able to really, really control that game uh, a lot more. I really think, that's hard to say. I guess getting the big burst off of the fair game was worth it. Well, so the AOA deck was brought by Moose Man, dude. Uh, this is Kagi, and that was game two. So, yeah, the AOA was brought by Moose Man, dude. Was not able to win game one. I think just got outboarded by that Sanctum for, like, one turn too long. And then those, uh, the Steel Hate came down. It came down in double in the first game. And so you had to get rid of both of the um, Vault Keeper and the Discombobulator. And most of the creature control was already gone at that point. So those just really made the AOA deck stall out game one. Um... Yeah, Moose Man dude saying the Vault Keeper kept hiding. Yeah, and that Book of Malefaction. I, I underselled, undersold that. It definitely did a lot more work um, than it could have because this deck needs to steal a decent amount. But very, very well played. Um, and congrats to both of these players for getting this far. Obviously, this is the um, top four of... Kagi, so this was a semifinal match. Both these players did very well this season to get here. Um, but 
Moose Mandu just not quite able to get us to game three. Yeah, even with the Ultra Graph turn one, that's kind of one of the interesting things. The the Lethologica, I wonder. I don't know. It's really hard to say because there's a lot of artifacts that were lost in the Lethologica, which are not necessarily fast, but they just give you a lot more momentum once you have them down against only one artifact control in this deck. But I really think not being able to stick some of that Steel Hate was uh, a Big issue for Moose Man, dude. We saw lots of value from... I mean, we got the Logos early with the Titan uh, archiving as well. So, awesome. Well, thanks to both players. Let's take a look at our finals then. So, if I remember correctly, I think, Fudgenator, you covered the other semifinal match. And I don't know if I actually saw the end. I need to go back and watch that because I can't remember who won it. Uh, let me see. There we go. Let's see in a second. So if you haven't watched that, spoilers ahead. But the first semifinal match has already been played, so we now know who is going to be in our finals. And we've got Quick Draw versus Holy Stew in our finals. You would rather put the Discombobulator on Bot Booked in? Yeah, I think it's tough. Um, the Bot Booked in is has a greater chance of being highest power compared to the Cronus, but um, yeah, either way, the the hit on um, being able to get the Book of Malefaction just kind of made it, it kind of didn't matter. They could get rid of it almost whenever they wanted. Uh, so we'll have Holy Stew versus Quick Draw in the finals. I'm not sure when that finals is going to be. <laughs> Quick draw has made it to a lot of finals. Uh, someone like Vaginator probably has that number more handy than I do, um, but I think it is probably the last three at least. Yeah. Yeah, putting it on a creature that you're not wanting your opponent to kill, or you don't care if your opponent kills as much, um, would be a good call. I don't know if it would have been enough to really save it, because like, you have four drop hips in the deck, so that Kronos at most is archiving you four cards. Um, but yeah, uh, so that is end of that game. Definitely went a little bit different than I thought. Game two is a little bit more <laughs> what I expected with Adelbert just being able to put on the, the gas and um, control the board enough to where Vicky just kind of can't keep up. But uh, very well played to both. And thanks, everyone, so much for watching. Um, I believe, if we're doing this like normal, the finals will be on Dataforge Streams channel whenever they get that scheduled. Be on the lookout in the Kagi Discord for that. As always, thank you again so much for uh, Murph and Quick Draw setting up the Kagi League. It's always a blast. Uh, if you're going to be at KFC, definitely encourage you to play the... Um, Best of one adaptive they're going to be running there. Also see me because I will have creator cards as well and bring your Martian Civil War pods for that. Uh, a little bit more casual than an entire league set up within a tournament, but um, it should be fun. That is it for me, though. Going to head out and do some Sunday afternoon napping. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we will see you next time. Take care.